the powers that be, yeah, they do have a strong hold on us, no doubt about it. We can be in denial if we want, but they definitely have a strong hold on us. Um, we talk about, you know, the reason why I always talk about me, male and female, because isn't, isn't that what you and I are? We're male and female. And when you start understanding the word of God from a male, female perspective, from your perspective and being able to apply yourself to the word of God, that helps you to understand more of it when you can put yourself into the word of God. And it, because it's a personal message of God's word to all of us. Praise the Lord. Um, yes, yeah, so I have to talk about male and female because listen. You know, the Bible talks so much about in first John two fifteen about love, not the world, neither the things in the world for all that's in the world is the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. And it talks about adultery, fornication, sexual and moral sin. And isn't that one of the main addictions other than substance abuse that we are all have been addicted to ever since we were little children? Some before they were teenagers were interested, if not just the opposite sex, heterosexuality, but homosexuality. Huh? So we're not just talking about homosexuality is a sin, which means going with your same gender, man with man, woman with woman. But we even talking about out of control sexuality where you just getting your freak on. Is that too ghetto? You understand what it means though, right? That too low class? You know what it means though. Meaning you just, that's what a fornicator is. They're not committed to one partner. They're going to get it from any woman they can, any man they can. It's a fornicator. And we definitely not going to follow it being you that we use the word fornication or adultery, meaning that if we're in a relationship, we supposed to be going by the, the rules of God. We going by the rules of our parents sometimes. And sometimes our parents didn't get along well. Our aunts and uncle, the, 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 the legacy of, relationship that we follow is from our own paths, our own families and what's around it. And it's not a good look. Like we talk about generational curse, many in our own family, black, brown, red, yellow, or white, is a lot of abuse. A lot of mistreatment, a lot of resentment, a lot of hatred. Even with people that didn't walk away from each other, a lot of arguing, fussing, domestic violence. Satan in our home. So it's not a good look. So it's easier to say, man, I'm just going to grab a woman here. I'm just going to grab a man here, there. And if I can't get along with him, I'll grab another man. I can't get along with her, I'll grab another woman. Some of the things that, because we talk about God as a God of unconditional love. Is he? I always say no. Because if not, what about these words that I'm going to share with you right now? Now watch what I'm getting ready to give you. This is coming from the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians chapter 5. Probably starting at about the 17th verse. Adultery. Sexual. Oh, sex between a married person and an unmarried person. So that means people having sex that's not married to each other. Fornication. Two people having sex, which is almost like adultery, but neither one of them are married, not even to each other. Not even to each other. They're just having sex because it's sexual gratification. So adultery is being committed to one, but cheating on them. And fornication is not even being committed to the one you're having sex with. You just committed to the sexual act. So if it ain't this man, it's another man. If it's not this woman, it's another woman. You hear people saying, they're not saying I'm not going to have sex. They say I'm not going to get married, which even though in their marriage, they're talking about legal, which that's one stage of marriage. But another stage of marriage, when we come right into the Bible, right into the Bible and stay with the Bible, right in the Bible, it's a man committed to a woman sexually. A woman committed to a man sexually in the Bible. 
not outside the Bible, not in the city hall, not in your public city hall in your state, not according to the governor of the state or the principalities of the state, but according to the word of God. Now, there's different ways to be married in different states, but in the word of God, it's one man committed to one woman. Now, in the Old Testament, of course, some of the men had more than one wife. And we got and we got to be careful even when we talk about Islam, comparing Islam to the Bible, and be fair. If you're gonna talk about Islam, you gotta be fair with the Bible too, because we talk about I think it's Surah chapter four saying that a Muslim can have four wives. Solomon had way more than four wives. Well, the the the, the Muhammad of the of Quran had more than four wives, but I still don't think he had. He didn't. I don't know if he had as many as. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. So Solomon beat, according to Hadiths and the Quran, Solomon, who was the wisest man in the Old Testament that the scripture said, wisest of the men of his time, he had a lot of women. They said, I think they said David had up to four to eight wives. I, I don't know, I don't remember. But a lot of the men of the Old Testament had more than one wife. But God said, let the two, God said, no matter how else you try to run around with it, let the two become. He put Adam and Eve together, not Adam with Eve and Yvette and Erlene. <laughs> you, you get the point. He put Adam and Eve together. So we can try to go anywhere we want to go. And even it said, let the two become one. The two are no more two, but they are one. So you can go from three, four, and five, and six everywhere you want to go. But God started with two. All right, we talked about adultery. We talked about fornication. Uncleanness. Anything that God considers unclean. Now these are all in the book of Galatians chapter five. Lasciviousness. And these are mental phobias of the mind. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, anything that God considers unclean. Some people keep a clean house and a clean body, but they have a dirty mind. It's like anything that's against God is dirty. I don't care how much common sense that it makes, how much sense it makes, how much education it is. If it's against God's word, it's unclean. Lasciviousness. That's a man or woman that shows lust, causes lust, and feels lust. Now, you know we can feel lust, but many times what we, happens when you have that spirit of that psyche of lasciviousness, the way you dress is going to provoke lust because the lust is in you. So the way you dress, you provoke lust. You feel in lust, you show in lust, and you cause in lust. I remember one time I was praying for a person. And the spirit spoke out. And I said, who are you? And the spirit said, I'm lascivious. If I had never seen it in the Bible, because sometimes demons speak cloudy, like people with a speech impediment sometimes. So the spirit was saying, that spirit that was coming from the person was said, Lass, I said, lasciviousness? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, demons do talk through people. And it was the spirit of lasciviousness. And that's a spirit that causes a man or woman to show lust, cause lust, feel it. See, sometimes when you feel something, you can hide it. But when that spirit of lasciviousness on it, you're going to dress a certain way. Eh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Men and women do it all the time. You know what you're wearing. You know you're being provocative. Even in, in when I talk about con these, these uh, shows, control... Uh, 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 and there's other, I just, that's, that's just what came to me. And the news anchor m one was the one talking about control. I thought about the song that said, women rule the world. It didn't matter who the artist was. It was the point of the words. Women rule the world. What do they know? What were they, how did they come up with that? What was they saying? Of course, they were saying women rule the world. So what do they know? What were they setting the stage for? Hmm, it's right in front of our face. Control. And these women, if it's all about their voices and their dancing, why are they dancing so why are they dress so naked?
Then turn around and talk about men being pervert. Well, don't be lascivious. Don't don't stop showing your cleavage. Since see, that's what the where the Muslims were right at, which they which is in the Bible, First Corinthians. Or in First Timothy chapter two, where it tells a woman to dress modest, talk modest, stay out of a men's face and dress modest. Close up your your uh cleavage. Stop dressing in all that. Nobody should really know what your butt look like, but your man. Shoot, the way they got clothes now, you wearing clothes, but every man can see your what what they call it, um, camel toe. What's that? The shape of a vagina. If he got has good enough, maybe I wouldn't be able to say. But guys that got have good eyes, hey, looking right at your vagina, right through your clothes, your butt crack, your your breast. And come on, women, y'all know it. And the same thing with a man. If he's wearing a muscle shirt or a pants too tight to show the prick of his pants, come on, showing lust, causing lust, and feeling lust. You know it. You know it. You know what you have on. Then when someone say something, you act like everybody's dumb, like you're playing dumb. That You're playing dumb. You know it. You're dumb, but you're not dumb in that aspect of knowing what you're doing. You're dumb because you're letting the devil use you as a tool of lust. All right, now, idolatry, the worship of idols or any image, whether it be um, actors, actresses, things. Um, there's a word that I want to... Uh, heroes, heroines, anything, anything, person, place, or thing that you put up as a worship before God. Witchcraft, dealing with spirits for power, sorcery, white magic, black magic, spells. Rebellion is a spirit of witchcraft, as of 1 Samuel Chapter 15, 20, because when you rebellious against God's word, you open yourself to invoke spirits. See, once the devil knows, it's just like your system not having enough vitamin C or good vitamins. This, the, everything, every bacteria that attacks you. See, cancer is always attacking your system, I read some time ago. We've all been hit with some type of cancer. But if your immune system is strong, just like we're always hit with viruses all the time, it's in the air. Dust, everything can cause you to get sick. So the more, but the more strong your immune system is from putting the right stuff in your body, it fights it off. So you may never know it as long as you have a real strong immune system. Same thing with the word of God. The word of God has to be part of your combat in your immune system to fight against the things that devil is fighting you. Because it's like I always say, breathe. So you can breathe in good air just as well as you breathe in bad air. God said, let me breathe into man. And he become a living soul. But Satan has put particles and viruses and sickness and disease and spirits in there. So even though you you inhale in the good, you also inhale the bad. Just like if it was a fire, smoker of any kind or anything. So you have a note. You're going to breathe in the oxygen and then breathe out carbon dioxide. But you also breathe in the oxygen of sin and sickness and disease and virus and inflammation and influenza. You see what I'm saying? So you, you get the bad with the good. Same thing with knowledge. You get the good with the bad. You get the right with the wrong. You get the male with the female. All right, let's go back to some more of these words. We did witchcraft. Hatred, which is extreme dislike. See, these are psychological things that hit your head, which keep you from God. Variance, the state or fact of disagreeing or quarreling. That's the spirit of variance. Always arguing against what's right. Your way is right, but not God's word. Either we're both wrong or one of us is right and one of us is wrong. Now, we could be right according to the world, but if we're right according to the world, we still can be wrong according to God's word. Word. Now, we both can be wrong in, in the world and in the word of God. But sometimes we could be right in the world, but wrong in the word of God. 
then sometimes you could be right in, in both of them if you know how to balance correctly. So hatred is strong disagreement. Variance is strong quarreling and conflict. Emulations, the effort to match or surpass uh, someone, a, a person or achievement by imitating them. Some people, they have that spirit of emulation. They just want to be like you. They may not like you, but they like what you're about, so they copy everything you do. Women do it to men. They may not give the man no credit. Men do it to women. We do it to people. We may not like the person, but we like what they achieve. And this spirit of emulation kind of goes with covetedness and, and uh, envy. It kind of goes together. Uh, wrath. Almost just like hatred. Strong dislike and causes vengeance. Um, what did I write? Because of the vengeance, they, people that are, are, are wrathful, they try to get even with you, some type of punishment on you because they're, they're angry with you. They're vengeful. Strife. Bitter. Sometimes violent. Violent conflict. Exertion or contract. In other words, a person that's strifeful They're always struggling against you. Fighting you with heated discussion. If they're not physically fighting you, they're fighting you with heated discussion. That's strife. Seditions. Person that has a riot, rebellious speech. They're against you, strong. See, these, a lot of these words are different words, but they, it's kind of same, similar. They're angry, quarrelsome. Fighting. It's a basically they're all, they're all fighting spirits. Uh, so seditions, riot, rebellion, which is rebellion, a rebellious speech, rebellious words, hearsays, or heresies, belief or opinions that are contrary to what you believe. So especially Orthodox Christianity, envy, discontent, or resentful, but yet longing around someone else's possessions. You don't particularly like them, but you want what they have. You don't particularly care for them, but you want what they have. Like jealousy. I want his, his girl. I want her man. It's different if he got rid of his girl and she got rid of her man. And then something I've seen on TV, too, a guy was talking about, it's like a chess game. He wasn't talking about chess, but he said, yeah, they were playing chess, but he was talking beyond the chess game. That's what chess is beyond. It's a worldly game. He said, you got to protect your queen, protect your king. Well, men, you can't protect a queen that don't want to be with you. Woman, you can't protect a king that don't want to be with you. The way you protect someone, especially in the word of God, is when they obey the word of God, they're working with you. If they're working against you, maybe that's not your king. I'm talking about in the word of God. Now, you can be talking about something else. You got a woman, you got to always be trying to look after because she's not following the word of God. You trying to follow the word of God as a man, but she's not. Maybe she's trying to find a king. Now that she ain't trying to find a man of God king. Now she ain't looking in King Jesus. Uh, and same thing you, uh, with, with a woman. She's trying to find to follow the Bible, but the you or the guy she's dealing with always out in the street looking for whores. That's what they are if they not settled down with what man. I don't care how nice they are. I don't care how professional are those. That's what the Bible calls them strange women, whores. That's what, when you're a fornicator, when you're going from woman to woman, you're a whoremonger, man. When you're going from man to man, you're a whore woman. That's what the Bible said. I didn't say it. Then you could be, then some men and women want to be patted on the head because they don't, because they're faithful to one woman or faithful to one man. But yet their heart is not right with God. So they think that they deserve a lot of credit because you're not cheating on her. You're not cheating on her. Okay, you deserve credit. But that's not enough. It's more than you staying home or when you go to work, come in and out without cheating with, because it's easy for a man and woman to cheat today. Somebody always up in, up opposite sex, always up in your face. And now the same sex for, for sex. So yeah, okay. 
Thank God you're not a cheating man. Thank God you're not a cheating woman. But are you an adultery when it comes to God's word? You're not following God. So you're still a spiritual adulterer. So you think you is a, a good man because you're not cheating on her. But are you really cheating her, treating her right according to the word of God? You think you're not, you're a good woman because you're not cheating on him. But are you right according to the word of God? See, it goes beyond just sex. That's just part of it. Thank God for anything good we do. But there's more to it. Um, what did I just call? I just did uh, her 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 heresies, right? Envy, discontent, or resentful long. Oh, I just did that. Longing for someone else's stuff. You envy them. You don't pretty much like them, but you want their stuff. Drunkenness. State of being intoxicated. So it's not just alcohol and drugs. Toxins, just like they say when you eat, there's toxins in your body that you need to be, that you need antioxidants, right? To get the toxins out of your body. So you need the word of God to clean your mind up from false doctrine, false science, literature, doctrine. Get into sound doctrine, the word of God. So toxins is just not the over drinking of alcohol, but it is. The over of drugs, but it is. Drunkenness is not just out over doing drugs and alcohol. It is drunkenness. But drunkenness is eating the wrong things, drinking the wrong things, learning the wrong things, living by the wrong things, which goes into everything else we've been talking about. Uncleanness, wrath, emulation, strife, seditions, envy. Now we're on drunken. drunken. Now we're going to get with the word reviling. Revelling. There is a reviling, but it's a reveling to R-E-V-E-L-L. -E -E reveling is loving a noisy good time.